And we're live. Good. Hi. Hello again. Johan Duvein. Yes. Hello from the Netherlands. Hello. <laughs> Hello to Israel. I'm, I'm, yes. Hot Israel. It's very hot here now. It's um, evening, but it's hot. It's warm. And um, I'm, I'm super excited about that talk. And we talked a little bit before. I'll tell everybody. Because... Um, I think that regardless that if we put the Chinese medicine aside, uh, it's, it's always interesting to hear you talk and hear you explain stuff. Not only Chinese medicine, just to hear your perspective about things, it's always interesting. So when we talk about Chinese medicine, it's even more interesting. And even this lecture, when, when I ask you to, to give a lecture, and you said, let me think about it. And then you came back and you said, I want to talk about nothing. The <laughs> significance of doing nothing. And it's, it's, again, it's amazing, you know, because it's important. People know it's important to rest and stuff like that. But you decided you want to talk about nothing. So it's like Seinfeld. You remember the, the, the show is about nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, to people who don't know you, uh, this is uh, Johan Duvain. He's been practicing... We, we calculated almost 45 years of Chinese medicine. Um, one of the leading voices of stems and branches in the world. Um, and, and you just wrote a book, let's put it. Yeah. You just wrote a new book. I have it. Ah, I, I forgot it's in the living room. Yeah. Um, but uh, I started reading it. It's amazing. So purchase it, buy it, people do something. Um, and uh, maybe you want you want to talk a little bit about the book, where we can buy it. Yeah, the the best is to buy it just with the local bookstore bookstore bookstore, because that's uh, especially when it comes from England and they don't have anything in stock. They will have it in stock from the seventh of July, uh, yeah. so it will be easier to find in bookstores now. And you don't have to pay uh, custom tax because. UK is now out of Europe, so mm. it's, it probably you have to pay custom tax when they send it to you. And when you buy it just with the local bookstore, uh, then you get just the price. Um, and that's easier and probably also quicker. And uh, I think the big book is, is um, I worked on it for two and a half years, I think, writing every day, also due to COVID, because otherwise you couldn't have finished it. And uh, it is not only theory or philosophy, it's also practical. But it's, it's with uh, case histories in it. And uh, you can read about the cases. You also can read about uh, self-knowledge, psychology, spirituality. There are lots of aspects and also practical chapters. And uh, I think there's no book yet who, uh, which writes about this concept in this way. So, yeah. And again, I was uh, uh, we were talking before, and I, I thought to those who don't know you, to those who know you, it's obvious, but the people who don't know you, Stems and Branches has a, like a spiritual idea behind it. People think that Stems and Branches is really high, uh, and, and the thing with you is that you make it very practical. It is. At the end, you know what to do. You actually understand what, the, 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 I don't know, to take all this knowledge and put it back in the ground to the patient with the needle and 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 you make it whole. For me, you make it whole and the book is written beautifully and very, you can really understand it. The English is, is like that, that you can really understand. So I highly recommend everybody uh, go buy the book. Um, and that's it. Maybe, maybe we start a little bit before that. I just want to remind everybody this, this is your website. Yeah. Um, if, if you want to reach you on after the lecture, you can write questions during the lecture. Let's see. Like, we have people saying hello, so it's going to look like this. Hi, hello, Asad. <laughs> Hi, Alexandra. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, good. Um, and that's it. If you have a question, I will stop uh, uh, you on when it's relevant and and we can uh, ask the question, and that's it. Jan, 
Yes, I'm okay. Let, let's just start and not talk too much nope. about signs and branches now because part of it will be in it, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I'm here. Bye. Okay. Bye. So, yeah. Here is my, uh, my email address. So if you want to send me an email, then, uh, um, then I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer this quick as possible. Um, the significance of doing nothing. And I, the first, sentence you read here is from the Tao Te Ching and they are not so easy to understand the, the last two ones never underestimate the value of doing nothing is from Winnie the Pooh <laughs> and doing nothing is very difficult you never know when you're done is actually from uh, Leslie Nielsen comedian so more people were busy with doing nothing but before we continue uh, I would like actually to ask you something um, I asked you, I will ask you to do nothing, not to write down, not to think too much, um, because when we start this lecture, you can say, okay, I want to have more knowledge and I want to accumulate knowledge. And then you're actually not here, but you think about what can I do with it or what did I learn and you're back in your memory, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't want you to be with this. So, I hope you can follow my words and my, my way of thinking. It's not a concept, it's just a way of thinking and I, I hope you can go with me uh, like two trains making the same space, uh, made same pace, not space, but pace. And so if one goes faster than the other one, then you feel like you go backwards. So try to follow me in the same pace and I will go through quite a lot of slides, but I will not explain everything. Uh, I just pinpoint some aspects. Later, I will add uh, the, the PDF of all the slides on Facebook so you can read them, um, but try to follow it just by doing nothing and sitting, not writing down. Don't think about what can I do with it, just try to follow it. So we will go through these kind of points. I hope we have time for that. Challenges and what it means in pulse diagnosis, challenges of how life can be challenging, how we can become healthy. I will talk about the Shen, often translated as the spirit, but that's actually not a real good translation. The Shen and its relationship. We will talk about acupuncture points which affect doing nothing. And I will talk a bit about Mencius, uh, one of my favorite uh, people of the uh, Chinese philosophical concept of life, of concept of thought. Um, we will start with constitutional acupuncture. What is it? What is constitutional acupuncture? It means that when you are born, there's a certain kind of energy on the date of birth. And that date of birth is uh, with a lot of gallbladder energy or lack of gallbladder energy or there is uh, more energy of the stomach or there's a lack of energy of the stomach. So there's a kind of imbalance on that day, which is normal. And so there will be certain parts more active, more powerful, some other parts that are more passive, they are weaker. And we like to balance that. People like to balance the, the energy of themselves. So that is a challenge. So when your bladder energy for instance is weak you want to focus on bladder energy to be make it stronger or when your gallbladder energy is very very strong you like to calm it down because it will be um, overstimulating your energy so that it is a channel the challenge which you have to find in yourself by which you find more balance and more health and that's for every individual is different because we all have a free will and the, the people who work with birth chart, birth chart, that are constitutional acupuncturists, they deal with those challenges and they try to make a certain balance which attunes to these people. Doesn't mean there is complete balance. Like my energy, for instance, we sp I spoke about it with uh, Elad, is colon and metal. So there's a lot of metal. So I need to have that. But if there's too much, it makes me ill. But if there's a lack of metal, I'm not myself. So as a constitution acupuncturist treating me, I want to have the right amount of metal which belongs to me. That is what the constitutional acupuncturist do, does. And so it starts with the birth chart. 
Another thing is that it works with pulses. Every acupuncturist should work with pulses, but definitely people working with constitutional acupuncture. And I'll talk about it a bit later about pulses. So the I am principle, the ego, is something which is often in the way of health. Because we, all of us, I think, <laughs> but I know that many people do, they like to stay in control. Whatever happens, we, we sacrifice sleep, we sacrifice our relationship, we work hard, we make plans to, to, to reach to a certain purpose, we, we, we challenge ourselves to do things, to create something, to have a purpose, to reach to a purpose, instead of being here and now. That's what we see with patients, that's what we see in practitioners. Many people have that. To, to let go of control is one of the most difficult things of the I am principle or the ego. Uh, because you have the feeling that there's insecurity, there is fear, there is, I, if I'm not in charge, then what can happen to me? So we create uh, uh, circumstances and an environment and ourselves that there's a certain kind of control. And we have to, because the ego, we can't live without an ego. But in, the, in our Western society, definitely, there is too much control because we have to, to do something, to uh, create something, to be the best, to be better than the best, to, to earn uh, money, to, uh, to cure many people, to, um, to whatever you can think of. Uh, but if you just do nothing, that's usually not so beneficial for people, they think. When, when you look into schools and people are lazy, they should work harder. And uh, if you sit down and just watch the nature, then they say, no, no, you have to do something because you have to become somebody and this is a hard society, so you have to learn something. That's our Western society. And so we, are, we have these habits, this plan to do to reach to something which is better than better <laughs> now this is often find impulses and this is something you find with many patients um, the gallbladder pericarp tayang this is the first energy which you often find more superficial more tight possibly a bit bit more thin often stronger um, and I can explain why it's called better heart constricted Taiyang in detail, but in general, you can say this is the first layer of defense. Taiyang is the first layer of defense. The pericard defends the energy of the heart, and so the heart is not vulnerable. And the Gobert energy is the energy which centers your ego, and so it makes you more stronger in yourself. And so when life is difficult, you want to feel stronger, you want to protect your heart, and you want to defend yourself against the world. And that you find often when the, these energies become more superficial and tight. There are other pulses which I listed here. Um, I don't explain them all, but especially I will talk about the push pulse. It's not from classical acupuncture, it's from the Shen Hammer method. It is, it is a pulse which is, is flooding, is coming up, to the surface it feels like there's a lot of access but it doesn't come as much as high as the young depth so it, it comes up like strong but then it falls apart it doesn't reach the end that means that you push to yourself too hard that's what we often see also in people when life is too challenging for these people and so when you find that then doing nothing is very important and we will talk about that later then there is a tight pulse. I wrote down what it means. I'm not going to read that. But what you often see is that the liver chi becomes too tight and constricted. Also because of stress and overwork and doing too much. But especially when there is too much willpower. There are too, much, too many desires. There's too much willpower to, to find something which you want, which you want to reach for. You want a purpose. You want, as I said, you want more taking more care of your patients, you want more money, you want another house, etc., etc. That you often find when the liver chi becomes too tight. 
and constricted. And after that, the next phase is that the liver chi actually becomes insufficient and all the other pulses are tight because the free flow of chi is disturbed. There's no, there's no free flow of chi anymore. And then you find everywhere you find tightness, but not in the liver. And so you have to treat the free flow of chi of the liver. These are the main pulses. And there are other pulses which I go very quickly through, which are further stages of, of over-challenging, overwork, uh, excessive will. That's when the pulse becomes soft or spreading. That is more qi insufficient, yin yang insufficient. As I said, I will put this on Facebook later so you can read it. And you find empty pulses. An empty pulse is a very superficial pulse. Uh, and it's not strong, it's soft. And below it, it's weak. There's nothing. So you find only this, then you really have qi insufficiency. So that's much further than the first example I gave. It's not the same as a absent pulse. An absent pulse is when you, you apply pressure, then you can feel it a little bit, but when you go through it, then it, it's gone. And when you release it, it comes back. And that's typically a chi deficiency due to overwork. But that's, again, a further stage of the first stages I have described. <clears throat> same with thin or fine pulses these are all uh, pulses you can find when people do too much but then um, doing nothing when you find this in people people don't understand even your question can you do nothing they have no idea what actually doing nothing means and to be honest uh, the first time somebody asked me that I had to think very hard what was meant with that and I have asked this question to many patients, can you do nothing? And most people, they actually find it difficult to do it, but also some people don't understand it. And especially with this thin or fine pulses, they don't understand doing nothing because they, they continue doing things. Now, this is, this is a, a uh, slide we will talk about a bit longer. The challenges of the ego and identity, time and duality. First, we need to talk about ego and identity. I've described a bit the ego, what it is. It is the center of yourself, of your consciousness, how you're aware of your world, uh, of your world outside, but also the world inside. You're aware of yourself and aware of your relationship and interactions. That is the consciousness, and the ego is the center of it. And the identity is the awareness and the ability to evaluate the self and the ego. So your ego is just the I am principle, and the identity is what you do with it, and that you are aware of it, and that you see the development, or the way it evolves, or the way it doesn't evolve. So the question children have in the beginning is, the why phase, when, when children start, why is that? Why is the, 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 the sky blue? Uh, why are the trees green? Uh, why am I here? Uh, that's, that's what a child asks. But when we grow older, we have this phase, what am I doing in this world? What can I do more? And what actually do I want? Uh, should I marry? Should I divorce? Should I work? Should I stay here? Should I travel somewhere? Uh, What's the reason that I'm in this world? That is an identity issue. And as you see, the ego and identity are in between the authentic self, the what is stored in the jing, and of course also in the heart, and the environment. So it is in between. The interaction between what's outside of you and what's inside of you. So it's always in between a duality of yourself and the outside world. And the same is with time. So when we, when we think about things, we think about the past, or we think about what we expect. It's very rare that you completely in the now and here, that you listen to me and you don't think, what can I do with it? Or where did I hear that before? Or 
just be here and with a kind of attentiveness, attentive awareness about the questions I ask. So what is ego doing in this life? And what it tries to do often is it seeks the wholeness. It, it tries to seek the opposite of separation. It seeks the, that things come together. And that's what we often find, for instance, in, in sexual relationship for a short time, we find a certain kind of wholeness, but then you're frustrated, but it's separated again. And, and you try to find it again and to find it again. And you find it in, in, in love, you find it in, in sometimes in work when you really create a kind of interaction which makes you feel very happy and complete and there's wholeness. And so there are many more examples where you can find this wholeness, but it is for a short time because the ego and the identity are always in between what's outside and what's inside. And that's one of the major challenges of everybody in life, that there is a duality which we can't go beyond. That's what the Chinese describe with yin and yang. That's part of our life. That is our three-dimensional world. world. But we, there is always a kind of idea, how can we overcome this duality? And let's start with the last point. Are we at all able to find an experience of unity by resisting opposing forces through meditation or detachments and exercises? And I don't think you can, because when you try to do that, it's already a goal. It's something which is further. I want to do something to become or to feel wholeness. That already is within time. You want to reach out to something and you're completely in a duality again. Detachment exercises to let go of things, they are still there. You can't let go. You can maybe integrate something, but if you want to let go of something, it is still there and you're again in a stage of duality. So the ego stays there. Which is one of the most difficult things of the ego, of, of the identity. So it starts, it starts off with, can we stop the inner dialogue? Can we stop thinking? No, let's start different. We all are storytellers. You can make a nice story of your life, what you did as a child, what you did as an adult, and what you did maybe as a practitioner, what you did in your work, what you did in your relationship, um, what traumas you have went through, etc., etc. And so there's always this, this going back memory of who you are, and you can make, you can stories about it. You can tell stories about it. And within ourselves, we have this inner dialogue. As I said, when I say all these things, there's something inside you that says, mm, I don't like this, or I like this, or I heard that before, or that's interesting, what can I do with it? This is inner dialogue, can you stop that? Just let go of that. Don't think about it anymore. Stop the inner dialogue. Are we able to stop our emotions and thoughts just to be here? like this train going together and we, we have the same pace, then time isn't there. So if I think about something here, then I'm back. Then I'm not here anymore. So can you stop the thought? Can you stop reacting? Like when somebody says, well, I'm bored, and then I can think, oh, I don't like that. And I say, well, that's how I was born, or this is, it started at that age, and that's a reaction because I don't like it, or I do like it, and I say, well, that's how I look like. So can you stop the, the movement of thinking and the movement of emotions, etc.? Can we stop our habits and compulsive behavior? That's one of the most difficult things. Because we are so used to do it. We are so used to eat in a certain way, think in a certain way, etc., etc. And even, we'll see later, that the Neijing Suwen actually describes that, that we... We do this. And the chapter 39 of the Soan says, when one is good at commenting on others, that's what we usually do when we practice acupuncture, he, he must be able to integrate them with, him, with himself. It is the only way. So it says self-knowledge is very, very important. 
And if we don't comment ourselves, if we don't look at ourselves and change the action, then actually we project our own fears and insecurities and habits and etc. on our patients. And that's the last thing we want to do, because that's really not where they come for. Now, this says that we there is a sense of belonging. Belonging means that what I ask you to do is to be with me, be with this talk, be with these words, start being with in the same pace trains. Yeah, you're one train, I'm the other train. Then the ego is still active, but it engages what there is instead of what you can do with it or what you think about it or feel about it. Yeah, because there it starts that you want, you expect something, you desire something or you think about it, or you feel something about it. So look to the path which is unfolding now. Instead of reaching what we do in meditation for a distant goal, a distant goal of wholeness. By doing nothing, I mean no desires, no expectations, no emotions, just see the facts of what's here and now. Stare out of the window sometimes. Just be there. Not by thinking, okay, when I do nothing, I will find something. No, that you find nothing. Doing nothing is doing nothing. I think it was with, with Wallander, one of the detective stories, when there was a real problem. It's a Swedish, uh, Swedish uh, movie and books. Uh, I think it was him that he, when it was really difficult, he stared out of the window for 20 minutes. And then suddenly something come up. And we'll talk about that later. So doing nothing is that you're aware of the path that is unfolding instead of that you desire for something or that you expect something or you feel something that it should be different or you think about it that it is different. Just what is the path that is unfolding? Now, Doing nothing is not so different from sleep. The only thing is that when you sleep, your I am principle, your ego principle, is not there anymore. You're not as much connected as you are now. You're awake now and you're very well, I'm very well aware of my I am principle. But when you sleep, you, your sleep is gone. Your ego is nearly gone. It's still there a bit, but not as much as during the day when everybody is awake. And doing nothing, or no, let's put it different, sleep restores the jing and the shen, as does doing nothing. If you do really nothing, you keep the body at rest and stable, and it means no desires to move, no desires to do something, just sit. It restores the jing, as it restores the shen. Because the mind is clear and calm. And if you desire something, then the mind is not clear. Because you see something, you like something, you want to have more of it, and you are in the future. So that is, the mind is not clear and calm. So just sit down, do nothing. That's all you do. And many people actually need to learn that. I had to learn that. I couldn't do it in the past. So... It restores your jing, it restores the shen. When you look to the yi and the zi, you see the lower part of this character is the same. This is the character of the heart. And the yi, the yi has here a part which kind of, it is a resonant of music, you could say. The, yeah, the resonance of music. So it, it explains that the yi, which is our intention, resonates from the heart. And the zi, our willpower, this is a kind of energy which goes straight on, upright. It, is, it has a strong willpower, is very direct, and it is upright. But again, in Chinese character, is based on the heart. So it means that when the heart is calm, that your intentions become different. 
you will become different. So you can't change it from your intentions or from your will. I don't want to have such a strong will. My, I should change my intentions. Uh, my challenges should be different, etc., etc. It starts with the heart. So when the heart is calm, the mind is clear, the body is at rest, and no desires, then the body and mind can come together. And that is a feeling of wholeness. It starts with doing nothing. Without, people sometimes call it meditation, but meditation is different. It has a certain idea what you should go for, what you should reach for. But doing nothing is really doing nothing. Don't interfere in what is unfolding. Now, we spoke about the Shen, and often it is translated as spirit, but I don't translate it because the word spirit is, is in the West, it is, has a, a religious connotation. And that's not what the, what the Chinese philosophy uh, knows it, uh, and doesn't know it as spirit, as a religious thing. Actually, actually everything what is very subtle could, could be Shen. Um, so, when you conceive there is a Shen, and there's Jing, and there's Po, the body, animal, soul. But when you are born, the Shen actually changes. The original Shen, the Yuan Shen, becomes the Wu Shen. I'm not going to talk about what all ha happens, but there is an original Shen. Something happens there, but after you're born, there is the five Shen. The Shen, the Hun, the Po, the Yi, and the Tzu. The Shen, then it is the mind, it's not so much the spirit. Yuan Shen is much more the spirit, if you want to translate it. The Shen as such is much more the mind. The Hun is the, is the uh, how do you describe it? It is the, you could say the soul, it is the, um, the moving part of yourself, it gives you images, gives you ideas which gives you creativity, adaptation. The ethereal soul, often it's called. The Po is more the animal soul, the instincts, the reactions, the instinctive reactions, but also the, the bodily understanding and the bodily care. That's also from the Po. The Yi is your intentions, and the Zhe is your willpower. And we can talk about these five spiritual sources a lot, but the only thing I want to say here is that when you think about the mind or the mind in the heart, <laughs> the mind in the head, it creates thoughts, it creates emotions, it creates movements. The hun creates movement, it creates images, it gives ideas. So when you look forward, you expect something, you, create, you use the hun to visualize something. The poor defense makes yourself stronger, um, can be fighting against other people, can help you to go to, into yourself, in introspection, all kinds of movements. The yi, as I said, intentions and the zhe, the will, goes into the future, it moves. So all the aspects of the five spiritual sources come enter into the Shen, all the, through your sense organs, all the information from outside enters into the Shen, and the Shen and the Hun and the Po and the Yi and the react. So all your thoughts, your, all your emotions, all your activities, all the movements actually are doing things instead of doing nothing. That's how we are trained, that's how we are born. And so doing nothing has more to do with the Yuan Shen, the original Shen, than with the Wu Shen, because the Wu Shen are made to do things. And it's not bad, because we, otherwise we can't live. But if you want to restore your health, then it's important, and also for your patients, to let go of that doing for a while, sometimes five minutes, sometimes one minute, sometimes 10 minutes or half an hour, by doing nothing. Now let's go a bit deeper in the Shen. I'm sorry it's a bit small, but in my slides it wasn't that small, but 
This is the picture of Shen. You find here, and I will talk about this character later, and you find this character. This is also a character Shen. And it means listening, to stretch, to express, to apply, to trust, to restrain, to report. Some, some people say it's spirit. And it means also movement. And on the left side of your uh, of the slide, you see two hands firmly holding a rope, closing of hands. It suggests two alternate principles which engender the universe, lightning. So two hands come together. That's in the center you feel, find this pole. And on the sides, you find these two hands. They come together and they create something from stillness, not from doing things. That's why I also wrote down here this hexagram. This hexagram is a hexagram related to standing still. Heaven above, earth below. Three yang lights, three yin lights. Heaven above, earth below. That's where they are. Nothing changes. If it would be the other way around, heaven here, earth on top, that will move things. And the heaven wants to go and the earth wants to go down. Here, heaven is above and the earth is below. So there's nothing. There is no movement. There's a standstill. And from the standstill, something can happen. It's like the pendulum of a pendulum clock. It stands still and then it goes the other way around. It stands still and it goes the other way around. So it moves in another direction. It creates something new because of the standstill. It allows this, the clock to move the other direction, the pendulum to go to move the other direction. So this whole picture of Shen creates something which is new. So it holds it and there's standstill and it gives you the possibility or anybody the possibility to move further. So doing nothing allows you to go further. And we'll see later that this word Shen and this Chinese character is actually the earthly branch which relates to the bladder energy. I will see that the bladder energy has a lot to do with creating new things. But in connection with the heart, it means something different. As I said, the project outwards, it relates to the inside, it gives all the information to the inside, it is the communication with the source of yourself and the world. Remember the ego and the identity. So it strengthens the ego and the identity. When this happens only. But the other part of the Shen is this part. This part, which is an altar. That is the influx from the will of heaven or the mandate of heaven. It is the relationship to the more subtle aspect of reality. You can't see that but it is more the vertical part. So this is the horizontal part, is the Shen, the Wu Shen, which gives information and, and the ego and identity communicate with the world. And another part of, of the Shen is the vertical part. That is inside yourself. It is not a connection with the world outside, but it is a connection with the authentic source in yourself and the authentic source of what you can call God or Tao or universe or something which is creative beyond our understanding. Now, in spite of what I said, when you read the Ling Shu about the Shen, it says, when one's blood and Qi are harmonious, his Qi is flowing and hindered, the five viscera being shaped and the Shen stored in the heart, causing, causing thought and will. Then he becomes a man. But that is the horizontal Shen in relationship with your environment and yourself. And you easily fall prey to your wills and your desires, your passions, your whatever. And so you don't see the unfolding path of the order of life, the natural order of life. That's opposite of doing nothing. And even so the Ling Shu focuses mainly on the horizontal here, not everywhere. It also knows exactly the vertical axis, you could say, the 
the center of yourself. So doing nothing, just sit down and you should try it, if you don't do it already, to sit outside or inside and watch out of the window and do nothing for one minute. Let's try it for 10 seconds now. That already sometimes is not easy. You easily start to think or to feel or to do something. The wushan is very important for the ego to do things. But the yin aspect of the heart shen is vulnerable with all of us. That's where the yuan shen is stored, part of the yuan shen. And it is important for people to do nothing. And there are certain acupuncture points which enable people to practice doing nothing because it calms them down and it strengthens the yin aspect of the heart. So we'll talk about these four points a little bit more. So heart one, highest spring, extreme fountain, and I'm not going to explain the, uh, the words now, but it, it works on the when there's insufficiency of yin. And when there's insufficiency of yin or yin stagnation, you're not able to do nothing. You feel lots of problems and you can see what kind of problems there are, but you feel there's no rest, there's heat, there's disturbance, there is emotions, there's sadness, there is grief, um, heart pain, love pain, whatever. Then heart your heart one is a good point to bring this calmness to cool people down and you will see when you do that and you ask people to lie down and not to talk with you then there suddenly is a part which is doing nothing people usually close their eyes so especially when there are a lot of emotions in communication with other people or with you or with their father or mother or with their environment then hard one is a good point because it really brings people to themselves and also to the what i've called here the greater consciousness or the vertical axis or the subtle realm or universe or whatever you call it so it's the individual consciousness you you bring it in conjunction together with the greater consciousness allowing the shen to feel in the center of being in relationship with the world but also with your own source that is heart one. Heart three increases also the yin of the heart. Dr. Van Buren always said, don't do it longer than 10 minutes. In most people that is true because it really strengthens the yin of the heart. And if you do it too long, then it gives corpus in the heart. And you don't want that. Um, I'm not going to explain why now, but that's something you don't want. And you see, again, you see that it cools and calms the fire. So you see a lot of, can be problems in the heart channel, can be problems in the shen, can be like kind of maniac behavior, or there can be even phlegm with it, and then it has obstruction and you find heat symptoms, and etc., etc. Here actually should not calm spirit, should be calm shen. So what it does, it brings the energy down. And when you bring the energy down, it brings more joy. The artificial part of joy, that is the manic behavior, that is gone. And people are more in contact with themselves and they feel more joy. So especially when people are restless, they are manic, they, they don't sleep anymore, etc., etc., then this is a very good point to, to bring them to themselves. And that's why it said it clears consciousness. It brings you back to your own individual consciousness and also together with the greater consciousness. So it, it, it gives you a better orientation. Who am I? What am I doing? Identity issues. So when there are identity issues, heart three is also a good point. Heart six is also a point which tonifies heart yin 
uh, you can say a lot of things about this uh, uh, this acupuncture point. Um, most important is that again, when you see this part clears the brain, so the mind is is overworking. So it's not only grief or fright or rage, but it is also the uh, nearly the addiction to it. They can't stop thinking. They can't stay away of certain pensiveness or they can't stay away of a problem. There's a love relationship and they can't let go of it. And they still think, how can I solve it? Or how do I, all these things. So they're addicted to thinking and they can make them very angry or very fearful, but they keep on going. That means that the heart yang is too active. And so you need to strengthen the heart yin. And one of the points which is possible is heart six. It stops verbal diarrhea. That's what happens when people can't let go of certain relationships or they are too occupied with something. Then they start to talk about it. That's typically uh, a, a symptom where you can treat heart six. Heart constrictor three, um, the heart constrictor is the defender of the heart. So when the heart is insufficient, the heart constrictor takes over to defend the heart. And so often there's heat. If you find that, you shouldn't treat the heart constrictor first. Then you should treat the heart first. Because when you calm down the heart constrictor, then the heart itself is vulnerable. So when there is heat, as here I said, clears heat in the blood, in the chi, in the skin, the stomach, the heart, constrict the heart itself. First treat the heart, then treat the heart constrictor. And then when it's cooled, then the heart is strong enough to deal with it. So on the psycho-emotional aspect, when there's an overactivity in the mind, when there's an overactivity in the Wu Shen, the five Shen, People don't know anymore what to do. There is agitation. There is too much instinctive powers. They, they want to fight things. They want to, to feel their grief. They don't know where to go anymore. They're completely chaotic in their behavior. Then heart constrictor three is a very good point to cool down the fire and to bring people back to themselves, especially when you take care of the heart before. Now, these are the points I wanted to discuss. And later we'll do two other points. Um, but I want to talk a bit about Mencius, one of my favorite uh, philosophers. Um, why? Because he was the first one who said that people themselves are actually good. Um, in the past, before him, we had the Legalist and the Mohist, and they, they didn't think people were good, so they wanted to punish people. Or they want to say, oh, you did that very good, but if you don't do it, you, you're punished. Uh, so there was always something, people are not good, so we have to educate them. And Confucius of Confucius, he also gave moral virtues, you could say. And when you kept these moral virtues, then everything should be okay. If your family works in this way, the country will work in that way. And Manzi was a Confucianist, but he didn't disagree with Confucius, but he added that people themselves actually are good. The only thing we need to do is to, the seed of virtue, this, this seed of goodness to give it water, to help it to grow. So he had four beginnings, which when properly cultivated, give it water, help it to grow, etc., will develop in benevolence, righteousness, decorum or propriety and wisdom. One thing I want to say about this, that benevolence or compassion is something which is between people in the outside world. 
Righteousness is something which is inside. Opposite of what we think of righteousness. We need to have judges and go to court and so on and so on. Righteousness is what is inside, what feels right and feels wrong. That is righteousness. Benevolence, compassion, humanity, etc. That's something which is in between people. Now, Mantis assumed that these seeds of virtues exist in everyone from your birth on. So when you cultivate these seeds and they mature, then you are able to feel your intuition and your inner impulses. And when it's only through dogma or virtues from the outside world, you should behave like that, this you should have these habits, etc., etc., then you have less entrance to intuition and inner impulses. And as he said, when the intuition and inner impulses are there, you can mature to a person with a compassionate heart. And so a compassionate heart is a heart where the yin is stable and still. And the yang and the willpower and the yi, the intent, is based on that compassionate heart. Now, this is a slide which I made myself. You see here the four beginnings and and the virtues. Um, I made this slide not to explain everything, but most important is that you find intuition here, you find intuition here. A clear sighted is also a certain kind of intuition. So it means that intuition is not only, as many people say, in the heart or in the fire. A lot of intuition is inside the area of water, in the kidneys, in the bladder, in your authentic chi, in, in your jing. If we think about it, that we are built from, we are conceived from two jing, and these two jing, these are the, this is the history of mankind. All this jing of your father and your mother is built on their jing, and on their jing, on their father's jing and mother's jing, etc. So we stand on the shoulders of thousands of thousands of years of experience which is given to us through the jing and within that jing there is knowledge and understanding and intuition which allows us to do things to feel things and i don't say that we shouldn't base our acupuncture clinic only on intuition on the contrary we need knowledge we need our experience but you also need the intuition. And the entrance to intuition is through doing nothing. Sometimes I do pulse taking and I don't understand the pulse and it takes me a longer time. I can sit sometimes, sometimes for 10 minutes or longer to just be there and suddenly when I do nothing and I feel, be and see what's unfolding, I suddenly, from my knowledge and the intuition, I know what to do. Now, intuition, you don't use your mind. There is no reasoning. So intuition comes when you do nothing. So it comes from, you could say, the heavenly spark of light. That's often how people describe intuition, that it rains inside and you, you get, you know something, you suddenly you know what to do. But intuition also, allows people to go to your authentic chi. The more authentic you are, the more access you have to your internal heaven, to your internal spark of life, to your jing, to the water. And these two, they are not better or worse. They are both there. So you have the fire intuition and you have the water or jing intuition or your authentic chi uh, in, uh, intuition. So it means there's one thing is that on top or around the shen, but also around your jing and around the water and fire, there are fears, there are traumas, there are insecurities. So if you want to have access to your intuition through doing nothing, you will 
be confronted with your fears, your insecurities, and so on. And that's why many people don't want to do nothing. And when they start doing nothing, they feel like anxious, they, they feel disturbed. And so the only thing I can say, try to do it every day, just one minute a day doing nothing. And gradually you will feel that these, these fears and insecurities and traumas are less becoming less important and you have more access to intuition. So the burden of your past experiences cover the source of intuition. But you can only find this source by being still and go inside. And what you will feel often is that when you do that, you start to sweat. And that's actually very good because that's the release of the energy of the trauma, of the fears, of the insecurity. So when you sit still and do nothing and you start sweating a bit, that's a very good sign. Just stay with that. Don't interfere. Do nothing. Yeah? You can also do it when you go for a long walk. As long as you don't think too much. You just walk, 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 walk. Then the ego also relaxes after a while. And it detaches itself from your I am principle. And then also you start to sweat more. And it also helps you to release certain energies which has to do with guilt, with shame, with fear, with insecurity, and so on. It is not the only solution, but it helps you to get access to intuition. Now here you see this, this hexagon again. This has to do with bladder. And a lot of people with bladder channel problems or bladder problems, they benefit when they they listen to their intuition. And often they don't. That goes together with the problems of the bladder. They listen to the world. They listen to the environment. They don't listen to themselves. They don't listen to their heart. They don't listen to their jing. They don't listen to their intuition. There's so much pressure from the outside world that they don't listen anymore to themselves. And then it's important to do nothing. And it makes people less dependent on, on the protocols, on what people want from them, even what you as a practitioner want from them. They, they find their own way. And that's very important by standing still and doing nothing. And at this point, bladder 67, when it, you do it at the right time, it strengthens the yin and that intuition which is within the jing which is stored on the collective thoughts, collective emotions, collective feelings, collective source of all your ancestors. And that's all also where intuition is. Yeah. So it guides people when they really suffer, not only from pain, but also from what challenging life they go through. And they become very unstable and even chaotic or manic or grief or there's no acceptance and then bladder 67 act activates that process of renewal standing still if they they really practice that then bladder 67 brings that energy to the other side it really can change them but it needs time and you need to find the right moment that when there's real standing still and you can feel that with your patient you see a certain kind of inner calmness then bladder 67 can change that behavior and bring less suffering, but more peace. And kidney 7, a point which you see here, just beside the logo, it's called returning current. And often it is described as, as this, after the strange loop, then it goes to kidney 7 again. But it also means it returns to its source, new life from the source. It is, we know maybe that kidney seven strengthens kidney yang, your life energy. You, that's the kidney yang is where the prenatal jing is stored. All the energy of your ancestors is stored. So it can bring you to your origin also where intuition is. So kidney seven 
when you start with bladder 67 and you do kidney 7, if that's possible and it's the right timing, it brings you back in stillness to something which is very alive, very strong to bring a major change of life. As long as you as a petitioner are able to find the right timing. It's not a trick that tomorrow you do bladder 67 and kidney 7 with everyone. That doesn't work. You need to find the right time that a regeneration can happen or a change and transformation can happen. Now, this is my last slide. If doing nothing is a purpose, doing nothing is doing. So it's no purpose. Doing nothing has no other purpose than doing nothing. And all the things I've said about doing nothing and what it can do with the yin of the heart, forget about that. Doing nothing has no other purpose than doing nothing. And you as petitioner know when to practice that or to advise it to people. Well, thank you. Just within the hour. First of all, amazing timing. You yeah. talked about timing. This is amazing timing. But but um, I think everything I said in the beginning is is right. It's it was amazing. It was inspiring. It's uh, I, I don't know. I just love love hear you talk and and love your lectures and love your your teaching and and I really love the way of thinking because everything you said. I think everybody knows it in in a, in a way. Yes, we studied me. we studied Chinese medicine, but the way you organize it and uh, the way you say it, it it teaches us a, a lot. It, it's new. Okay. Some I don't know why, but now it's new. So that's, uh, yeah, that's good to hear because it's not new. It, it's it's we all have <laughs> learned these things. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, everybody's writing. Thank you. But uh, if someone have a question now, it's the time before we we let Yuan go. Um, and Yuan, you said uh, we try to put the PDF on on this talk on on the comments on this talk. Yes, and the so talk will be available yeah, on Facebook. Talking, yeah, I will send it to you as well, so you can add it on the page, and I will add it also as a comment. Uh, when it's when I can find it on Facebook, then I add it as a comment so people can see it. So thank you very much, Johan, again. And I want to finish with this again. So if someone missed it, the new book is out. Buy it, read it, and then do nothing. Okay, because reading is doing something. Okay, it's not. It don't count. If you want to do nothing, don't read it. Yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, thank you, Johan, again. Thank you very much. I, I don't have words. Again, thank you very much. Thanks. There are no questions. That's, uh, okay. Or are there questions? Um, can we use point on stuff? Ah, someone asked if you can use the points on yourself, if you, if you do it, but I think it's another talk, no? That's another talk, but it is preferable if if uh, if it's an acute phase in yourself, then you can do it. But if it's not acute, then let out, let other person, another practitioner yeah. decide what's good for you, but not to yourself. But if it's you acute, can't do you can't do nothing by doing something, you know. <laughs> exactly. So it's it, it it it's not gonna work. No, true, <laughs> true, very true, very true. Yeah. So thanks again, Jan. Very inspiring. Thank you. I don't know what to say. Thank you very much and good night, everybody. Hopefully we'll meet face to face soon. Bye-bye. Yes.